thank you very much, everyone. And um, it was actually interesting listening to that presentation from Toby because we didn't compare any notes at all ahead of today. And we didn't get any writing instructions either from Data61 or from uh, the PMNC team. But uh, you'll see a few common themes between what you heard in the last two presentations and what I'll be presenting today. Um, my focus is on um, our work with Data61 and um, the uh, National Map slash Terrier product that um, we've created to assist uh, our work around the NEII. First thing I'll do is just provide a bit of an overview of national environmental infrastructure. We're kind of the environmental interoperability framework. We're a, we're a sliver of that broader data landscape. We see ourselves as that. Uh, it's a whole of government activity, the NEII, so we work a lot with Neil Evans, Geoscience Australia and Department of Environment. Um, Department of Agriculture and Water Resources, etc. And really the objective of NEII is to, uh, I guess, unpack similar to data.gov.au, but um, make a lot of that investment in data that's currently locked up in archives within agencies. And environmental data or information has some unique characteristics. It's quite large. Um, and how it's managed is somewhat different. Uh, it's got a very different temporal frequency in the case of observations. We can have data coming through every minute, every second. So it's some unique qualities of environmental information that require a slightly different architecture. So the NEII uh, is essentially a, a data platform. There's some components. They're very similar to uh, some of the things you heard um, in Pia's presentation. There's a catalogue. Um, Observations and geographies, we're fundamentally talking about um, web data services, uh, specifically OGC services, so WFS, WMS services, so promulgating the adoption of those approaches with our stakeholders. Uh, but also, um, I noticed it wasn't in Bill's slide where he talked about the, uh, the standards, and I'll talk about this in a minute or two. Uh, a, a protocol or a, or a format that's used widely in our world is um, NetCDF, FREDS, OpenDAP, etc. The marine community, the oceanography community uses that, which is a slightly different way of delivering information and storing information than the, the OGC model. So we've embedded some of that thinking in the NEII viewer world. Um, and there's some other components inside the NEII that are unique to environmental information. For example, the concept of observing methods, environmental parameters, and a project that we've uh, got on the boil at the moment called the National Register of Environmental Monitoring Sites. Um, if you want to learn more, just remember neii.gov.au. There's a number, bit of documentation there um, talking in more detail to that architecture. My presentation will focus on the viewer. Um, I guess we embarked on this journey because we're putting a lot of effort into um, the back end, interoperability, standards, service level agreements, putting in uh, a lot of effort into creating robust or developing a robust data delivery platform with our stakeholders, not necessarily into building a, um, a visualisation capability. So most of what our team does is uh, standards, interoperability, etc. So um, I kind of use this okay. diagram. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, I use this uh, diagram a little bit to reflect a little bit on some of the projects I've seen, certainly inside the bureau and elsewhere. Uh, a lot of the quantum of our resources um, in data delivery projects, and I suspect it's pretty common elsewhere in perhaps GA and Department of Environment, etc. Uh, goes into, I guess, portal, graphical user interface, mapping interface development. Um, if you've got $100, um, sometimes I've seen projects where 80 of those dollars go into um, the development of the portal or the, the graphical user interface. Um, that's been a little bit of a problem for some of the projects I've seen in terms of long-term sustainability and BAU of delivering data. In our NEI world, as of about two years ago, we tried to flip that equation of decrease the quantum of resource going into building a user interface and increase the robustness of the platform, the service level agreements, the, the policies, the frameworks, etc., to support that, because we really do feel that's key to engendering uptake and reuse of the data. Um, however, communicating what a data platform is without a user interface is a real challenge. And um, particularly at the early kind of genesis of a program like ours, when we're socialising the concepts with um, exec in our organisation, exec in other organisations. I think um, 
Helen reflected on that a little bit at the beginning of her presentation. So the real weakness for the NEII in terms of how do you uh, illustrate, showcase, communicate interoperability without a, a user interface while, um, while I guess, being cognizant of that previous diagram of, um, of, of creating a, a, an interface without a sustainable platform. So the Terrier product, the national map product, and I'll talk about that language in my last slide, has been really critical. Our experience with it has been fantastic and it's resolved a lot of those challenges for us. So it's given us uh, a, um, a user interface to communicate what the data platform will look like um, while uh, doing it in a relatively um, low transaction, um, cost effective uh, way, just like Toby communicated. Those, there's been a few, um, um, oh, sorry, these are some of the drivers. I, I guess Toby reflected on seeing the original presentation uh, of the national map some two years ago. I had a similar experience where it was uh, shown to me. And uh, I went home that day after seeing it. Uh, Tim Neal showed it to me at an ABS forum. And um, I booted it up on uh, Firefox. I booted it up on Safari at home. I booted it up on um, uh, Google Chrome. I really hit it with a number of browsers particularly in the workplace, actually, where typically um, those installs, certainly in the APS, can be a little bit fickle. And the National Map product just worked uh, across all those. And that was actually um, a, a really major um, realisation for us of its potential value, because certainly inside the Bureau, we spend a lot of resources on cross-browser cross support at uh, the end of um, UI development. And, and it's a very costly exercise. Um, I think typically we just simply um, mandate the use of one browser is I think usually the outcome. Please use Firefox, and that's certainly the case with our SAP systems. I'm not sure how universal that is. Uh, so that's the way we normally get around that cross-browser compatibility. But supporting just one browser is not tenable in 2015. Uh, the rapid development cycle that was really appealing. Uh, we spun up. Uh, I won't be showing the viewer. Uh, I'll show you the URL. I won't show many um, variants of it today and you will see many more in the next hour so it's not so much about the viewer. Um, you can explore it for yourself but the development cycle was very fast. We Nick Dell of Data61 spun it up in about three or four months leveraging clearly all the work that had been done with comms and, um, and uh, the national map product. The hosting capability was really appealing for us and I think we've got currently a two-year arrangement with Data61. Um, frankly for the um, for, for the amount of money it took us to build, um, we probably wouldn't mind if um, we continued on that arrangement for a number of years because uh, hosting a product like that on uh, our infrastructure inside the Bureau that's got um, pretty high security requirements would have been pretty challenging. So that external model's quite appealing. It's standards-based, really appealing in terms of the NEII and the NEI reference architecture. So it's interoperable um, in terms of, for example, in the NEI space, uh, aligned with OGC standards, uh, more recently Threads, OpenDAP, etc. And again, uh, this was picked up a little bit, um, we're part of a network and that's, I think what's been interesting with this, I think it's fair to say this network's been pretty organic and I think it's probably going to become a little bit less organic, but um, I think there's value in still keeping that organic nature um, and I'll, uh, I'll kind of reflect on that when we talk about roadmaps, etc. But there are efficiencies in terms of being part of a network. Um, and just hearing some about some of the functionality that uh, Toby's um, been developing with Data61, I think we want some of those things in the next iteration of our product. Uh, I'll zoom through this slide. Um, this is uh, what you'd see if you went to the NEI viewer. It does look a lot like um, the national map, slash probably the, the PAL, PAL library version that's um, behind a DMZ as well. Uh, and um, there's some... Some elements of this are a little bit different, like it supports the grid of data, so I think quite a bit of the work that Data61 did was, uh, that Bill did, was, um, was around supporting open DAP threads protocols. Just want to um, reflect on uh, our expectations <coughs> versus our experiences to date. I guess we've been on this journey for about a year now, Leah, is that, that's probably about right. Uh, and uh, we're going to a second iteration of um, NEI viewer development in this financial year, some more enhancements um, specific to NEII. Um, the, the experience has really, I guess, exceeded our expectations of what we get. Um, and it'll point to the next one. There were a lot of unexpected outcomes that um, I guess we're learning probably on a weekly basis. Um, we're finding more and more it's becoming a little bit of a tool for some of our business areas. So actually, um, one of the data products, we, um, there's four 
NEI data services available through the viewer at the moment. There's marine water quality data for the Great Barrier Reef. There's the Australian Hydrology Geofabric. There is um, solar data product that Ian Muirhead's team develops and something called Reef Temp. Uh, each of those business areas are starting to slowly use the viewer as their method for communicating with their stakeholders. They didn't have a presentation layer necessarily or a mature presentation layer. So each of those are finding it valuable for themselves, irrespective of the interoperability objective. It's actually been a great user acceptance tool. We do a lot of, we're in a services paradigm, you do a lot of testing in-house um, with testers, so unit testing, etc. You're testing the robustness of the services, but that's not the same as um, trying to plug those services in, those data services, and have them uh, interoperable with other data. So the um, viewer has been a great UAT tool. So the kind of questions we've been getting back from uh, Bill and uh, his team um, have pushed us a little bit on the services end, on the on the um, on the server end, in how we're configuring data. Um, it's also more recently, in the last three weeks, becoming an increasingly valuable rapid prototyping tool for us. So I'm taking a slightly different flavour to what. Um, I mean, maybe it's a similar theme to yours, Toby, but we're sending CSV files out at the beginning of a project now. For example, the NEMSA project, the National Environmental Monitoring Sites Register. We're doing mashups of that product now through our viewer, sending the CSV files to data custodians, whether they've been CSIRO, the soils people, or Ian Muirhead with the solar network, using it as a way of socialising the concepts about the end product that's being developed at the same time. The end product will be visible through our viewer, but as a rapid prototyping tool, it's pretty, pretty excellent, actually, um, and we're just learning that. And I think it points to that JSON approach and the support for generic file formats like CSV, pretty powerful. Uh, future. Um, well, our collaboration is continuing with Data61. Um, we've got some more work in this year. You can speak to Leo to kind of find out what that actually looks like, what sort of functionality we're requesting uh, for the viewer. Uh, I think the roadmap is really, really critical. For it was me coming here today and listening to Toby's presentation, a little bit of Steve, uh, Bill's presentation, to understand what's in the pipeline. So getting the clarity of what's in the pipeline and putting that uh, in a place where we can all, I guess, see it is really critical. Uh, for us um, to almost uh, pick and choose bits of functionality in the future. Product differentiation and branding, I think, is becoming um, a bit of a challenge for us all in this space. I noticed that your presentation flipped from it being a national map product to a terrier product to a terrier JS product. I think um, that probably that product differentiation would really help to differentiate from the initiative versus the product versus the tech stack. Because certainly, as an example, inside the Bureau, um, I think the Terrier JS and the Terrier tech stack um, should be promulgated widely in our organisation for a method for delivering new applications, but we couldn't necessarily promulgate the use of the national map inside, uh, if you see the subtlety there. So I think product differentiation and branding could be really helpful in terms of socialising and getting adoption. And there's a joint benefit in doing that, I think, um, in taking a common approach, and your presentation touched on that. Um, the last one, light application versus bespoke. I battle with this a little bit, actually, because one of the appeals of the original work we did with you guys was we liked the fact that it didn't do much, but it did what it did really well. So, yes, uh, you can pan, you can zoom, you can turn a layer on and off. We've been able to do that for about 15 years. Um, what we haven't been able to do, I guess, is that cross-browser um, compatibility and some of the support for generic file formats. So I, I challenge myself a little bit in the NEI view world, how much bespoke functionality we keep building in there, versus at what point do we stop and say, actually, um, the viewer's there or the national map's there for um, your three and a half minute query. After that, you want the data and you're going to analyse it with QGIS, with ArcGIS, with R, with Python. And certainly our community operates in that way. So. Um, you know, all power to you if you um, want to create a really bespoke um, national map application slash PAL library application. But I think for us, there's a real challenge to think through how far we take our viewer and at what point do we use that for a launch pad for a, a different paradigm. So thanks for everyone's time.